Welcome to lecture 4. In this lecture we'll take a look at FreeJS and create a simple scene with a rotating cube, all based on the documentation you find on the FreeJS website. There are some important differences between what we are going to create and the example here. First, here the script is embedded in the HTML file. We are going to script in a separate file, which is the model.js file. Second, here the normal version of the FreeJS library is used. We are going to use the module version, which we import in our script. And last, in this example, the VR covers the whole window, but we want our VR to be limited to the element we have given the ID model. This slide shows the adjustments we have to make. First, we import the model version of FreeJS. So in the first line, you see import everything as free, and then we give the path to the module version of free. We have placed it in the vendor folder. Next, we store the element with ID model into the variable model element. For this, we use the query selector. Instantiating the scene is just like in the example. The scene is like a stage or a world, so it contains objects in 3D. Next, the camera is instantiated. We are using the perspective camera. Before we go deeper into the script, let's first take a look at what a perspective camera exactly is. In this image, we see the three axes of a virtual 3D world. They point to the positive X, Y and Z direction. The camera is exactly in the middle, or the origin, and looking in the negative Z direction. In this looking direction, we see two planes. The first one, the near clipping plane, is the minimum distance from where our camera can see objects in our 3D world. The other plane is the far clipping plane, and it's the limit to where our camera can see objects. So our camera can see between the near and far plane. This area is called the frustum. The angle defines how broad or narrow our image will be. The ratio between the near and far plane width and height is called the aspect ratio. A very commonly used aspect ratio is 16 by 9. And if you recalculate the minimum width and height we have set for our model element, you will see that also this is 16 by 9. So when integrating our VR into the Strawberry Fields dashboard, we will decrease the size of the element, but respect the aspect ratio. Knowing this, the arguments the perspective camera takes in make more sense. The first value is the angle, so it's set to 75 degrees. The last two arguments are the near and far plane. So our camera is able to see objects from point one distance up to a distance of 1000. The second argument is the aspect ratio. And you see that instead of taking the window, we take the model element to calculate the ratio between width and height. There's one more thing that we have to be aware of. Window has the properties of inner width and inner height. But an element doesn't have these properties and therefore we use offset width and offset height instead. That completes the properties for the camera. Now we have a scene and a camera looking at the scene. Then we also need a renderer. A renderer is like a painter. It takes what the camera sees and paints it on our screen. Here the renderer is instantiated using a WebGL renderer. And next we give our renderer a canvas, which is of course our model element where we want to display our virtual reality. So here again the properties offset width and offset height are used. Finally we need to add the canvas of our renderer to our DOM structure. So what the renderer creates is appended as child of the parent, which is our model element. Altogether, we have created a scene, a camera that's looking at the scene, and a renderer that paints what the camera sees, and we have limited everything to the model element where we want to place our VR. Now let's try out our code. So we go to the index page and open it with live server. And there it is. Now you might think that we are still looking at the background of our index.html file, but we are not. If we change the color from black to, let's say, white, then we still will see a black virtual reality. So we're actually looking at a scene, but there's nothing in our scene, so there's nothing to look at. 
we are going to create a 3D object, or in 3D terminology, a mesh. Any mesh needs to know at least two things. First, its form or its geometry, and second, how it looks, or in other words, the material. So we first create a geometry using the free box geometry. This is one of the standard geometries of the FreeGS library. It takes in its dimensions as arguments, but by default it's one by one by one. As material we take the mesh basic material. There are many materials in 3GS, but this is the most basic. Any material takes in an object as argument. The object describes the properties of the material. We only use the property color, which is set to a nice green. Now we have defined the geometry and the material, we are able to create our mesh, our cube object, that takes in the geometry and the material. Last, we need to add our object to the scene. It is likely that in our VR, on the scene, things will change over time. This means that we want our renderer to regularly repaint what the camera sees of our scene. This is done by the animate function. Inside the function, we see what we already have seen before. The renderer renders the scene looking through the camera. Then we need something that invokes our animate function regularly. This way we create something that is similar to a film strip, where images or frames follow each other in a fixed time interval. For this we use the request animation frame method, which is a global method. The method will invoke the function that is given as argument whenever the browser starts to repaint the screen. As we give the animate function as an argument, the animate function will be invoked as a loop. And so we create something like the film strip in which the renderer regularly repaints what the camera sees of our scene. In other words, the request animation frame method tells the browser that you wish to perform an animation and request that the browser calls a specific function to update an animation before the next repaint. The method takes a callback as an argument to be invoked before the repaint. If we would launch our application now, we would still see nothing but a black screen. This is because the camera and the cube are located on the same location, the origin. By default, all objects are placed on 0, 0, 0. So we are going to push back our camera into the positive Z direction and of a distance bigger than the dimensions of our cube, so bigger than one unit. Now the cube is in front of the camera and as it is between our near and far plane, we can actually see it. Let's take a look at what we have created so far. Opening our application with a live server, we indeed see a green cube. Although it's hard to say it's really a cube because we only see one of the sides. To make clear that we are actually looking at a cube, we introduce a spinning animation. We do so in the animate function where we update the X and Y rotation in radians. Now we see our cube spinning, which makes clear it is indeed a cube, but also that our renderer repaints over and over again. And so we have created our first scene. See you in the next lecture.